What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of Grey Man Operations. In this video, I'm going to try to outline for you guys as scientifically as possible why it's more comfortable and more concealable to run a full-size weapon mounted light over something like a compact weapon mounted light. Now, the lights that I own that I'm using to build the evidence for this review Obviously, the Inforce Wild 2, the Inforce Wild 1, the Streamlight TLR uh, 7A, the Surefire X300. I own all the OLEDs, the big ones and the small ones, <coughs> excuse me, and the Streamlight TLR 1HL. And I think that, in the, at least in my experience of all the holsters and weapon lights that I've reviewed, and I'm going to show you a lot of holsters in this video, it's better more comfortable and more concealable to run a full-size light than it is to run a compact light. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is concealment. And I'm going to switch to B-roll where I actually try to push my stomach out. And you're going to see that to show you the point of what I'm talking about. But before we get to that, I want to show you this. So I'm going to use this alias system, beltless systems thing to illustrate my point. So this is a Shinobi Kydex holster for the Streamlight TLR1 HL. And if I put this on, imagine this uh, alias system is your belt. Okay. As you can see, there is quite a bit more going on below the belt than there is above the belt. Right. That makes sense. Obviously, you'll have the grip of your firearm here. But holster wise, there's more holster below the belt than there is above the belt. Now, if we do the same thing with, say, the Southwest Holsters Rattler, which is for the um, Inforce Wild 1, you'll see that there is much less going on below the belt than there would be above the belt, especially with the grip of your firearm here. Now, here is my thought process. I want you to imagine this is a holster. I know it's going to be weird. I'm going to make it. It's all going to make sense in a second. Okay. Uh, where's 150? So I'm going to hold this holster in the middle. Okay. This is the center point of that holster. This end is going to represent your belt. Now, if your belt is above the center point of the holster. This is the bottom of the holster. This is the top of the holster. This is your body. Your body is on this side of the camera, right? If your belt is on the above the center point, right above, let's say just right there, and you tighten it, it's going to do that, i.e. tuck the grip of the firearm into your body. Conversely, if your belt is below the center point of the holster, and you tighten it, it's going to do that, i.e. the grip is going to go outwards. I'm going to switch the view, and I'm going to show you a few different holsters and a few different lights to illustrate this point. Okay, guys, so here is the Inforce Wild 2 with the Alpha Tactics holster. So I'm going to push my stomach out, right? I've got a fairly flat stomach. Um, so in order to simulate this, I'm going to literally try to push this holster outwards and as you can see because there's more holster in my pants than outside of my pants it literally digs into my stomach here's the same test with the streamlight tlr 7a this is with a shinobi kydex holster i think oh no a southwest holster and as you can see i can push the holster outwards and the firearm or the grip of the firearm outwards now it's, this, is, this isn't holster specific because here's Southwest holster for the Surefire X300. And again, because there's more holster in my pants, the holster actually pushes itself into my stomach because of that fulcrum, that, that compression point is higher up on the holster. Same deal with the TLR1 HL with the Shinobi Kydex holster. Again, I can't push my, I can't push this, the firearm out the holster actually pushes into my stomach. And then lastly, I'm going to show you the TLR1, the TLR7A, excuse me, in a Shinobi Kydex holster. And as you can see, because there's more firearm and holster outside of my pants than inside of my pants, 
I can literally push the grip of the firearm outwards. Now, those of you who follow my channel, especially on Instagram, will remember about a week or two ago, I did a live with James from Southwest Horses and I was carrying the Surefire X300. It was in that week when I was testing the steering. And this is James's X300 horse that I have, right? I wanted one with the open front. This is his standard X300 holster. Now, both these holsters conceal pretty much the same, but this one is way more comfortable, okay? Because they more or less have the same going on below the belt, but this one is way more comfortable. And now we're going to get on to comfort. Now, for my male viewers, I'm going to paint you a picture here of being kicked in the nuts, okay? And the males are going to get this. When a male experiences a testicular impact, okay, there are two kinds. There's the immediate pain one, which isn't that bad. Then there's the one where you know something brushed up against it. And it's almost like the pain says to you, look, I'm going to give you a moment to prepare yourself for what's about to happen. Okay, you might want to go to a corner, you might want to go to a private place. But in a few moments time, you are going to be experiencing pain similar to giving birth to quadruplets. Okay, that pain is generally in the area just above or just below their belt line. It's a very sensitive part. You want to really hurt a guy, hit a guy there. Okay, the area just below our belt line, just above our groin area is extremely sensitive, right? Impact there really, really hurts. Now, why is it more comfortable to carry something like this than it is to carry something like this? Is because when I tighten my belt, right? When I tighten my belt, because we've got more belt below the center point of this holster it's going to do a bit of that and this year is going to dig into your stomach conversely when i do when i carry a holster like this can you see that and i tighten my belt because there's more going on below than there is above it's going to do that and so it's going to relieve that pressure just above your groin area. Now, guys, I get asked about holsters and concealment more than anything else. And I was on a course recently, a Bravo Tactical Africa Dynamic Movement course. And one of the guys on the course was carrying a holster for just the firearm. And he was dissatisfied with comfort and concealment. And I gave him my Bravo Concealment also this actual holster for the Surefire X300. And... Not only did he, did he feel a, an improvement in comfort and concealment, he just felt everything sat better because there's more surface area between you and the holster. There's more of a contact patch, okay? So everything sits more snug. And what you also have to remember is with something small, if I tighten this because it's smaller, the pressure against the body is increased versus something like this. When I tighten it, I've got this entire area here to disperse that pressure. It's kind of the same example as to like why you can prick someone with a pin and you can puncture their skin. But if you try the same thing with a pin, which has a bigger point to it you won't puncture the skin because this because of the surface area the pressure or the impact is multiplied so carrying a smaller holster does cause a increase in inward pressure on your body versus carrying a bigger holster i was actually at the gun shop just this past week at the shooting range excuse me and one of the guys they were saying when he carried his 1911 strong side that thing used to disappear you used to put it in the holster and used to be gone. But that's because you've got that long barrel down the side of your pants. And when you tighten it, your belt pushes everything in. But when you carry these, these 38, 38 special, because you've got that, that, that short barrel, as soon as you tighten your belt, because the, the fulcrum, the, the point of compression is below the heaviest part of what is trying to compress, it leans outwards. I want to say to you, before you buy... A weapon mounted light please take that into consideration it is going to be easier and more comfortable at least in my opinion 
to carry and conceal a firearm fitted with a full-size weapon-mounted light. Now, next week, I'm going to do a video comparing what I consider to be the best compact weapon-mounted light, which is the uh, Streamlight TLR7A, to the best full-size weapon-mounted light, which, in my opinion, is either the TLR1HL or the Shofire X300, although I do prefer the switches on the TLR1HL as well as the beams. It's probably going to be the TLR1HL, right? So it's kind of going to be a Streamlight versus Streamlight. Not so much for size, but I want to show you what you're missing out on. If I think of myself in a low light environment, <clears throat> and I'm actually going to change my low light testing techniques, my low my, my weapon mounted light testing techniques, because a lot of times people will test a weapon mounted light and it'll be pitch black. And I've realized uh, even, even I've made that mistake. You know, you live and you learn. There's got to be some kind of light coming back at you to to test whether or not the weapon mounted light or even the handheld can defeat that light. For example, if you're outside and there's a vehicle, you if you put on your weapon mounted light, you need to be able to know whether that person in that vehicle is reaching for something. So it's got to defeat that headlights. With these flashlights being so small, right, you can't have a really deep uh, reflector. And the depth of the reflector is almost directly proportional to the amount of candela you're able to get out of a weapon mounted light or even a flashlight and so scratch the 500 lumen idea it's the amount of candela and you just can't get those candela numbers on your compact weapon mounted light if you want my opinion buy the bigger weapon mounted light buy the bigger holster it's going to be more comfortable it's going to be more concealable i want to say a huge thanks to my patrons because those of you who follow me know that quite recently instagram slapped me with a ban which says that they won't share my account to people who don't follow me so if you do follow me on instagram if you are watching this video on instagram um please like tag someone so i can get the word out there because people who don't follow me won't be able to see my content right now patreon followers we i'm giving away a trauma kit a full trauma kit at the end of the month at the end of next month i'm giving away another holosun 47k I want to say a big thanks to you guys. If you want to join on Patreon, it is the first link in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, or if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, excuse me. And if you're watching on YouTube, it is in the video description below. That is it, guys. I'll see you next week where I compare big lights to small lights. Have a good week. Be safe. Train hard. Cheers. God bless.